Okay, welcome to today's tutorial on uh, what if analysis and correlations in Excel. So I have the housing.xlsx file from your instructor's webpage already opened up and I'm on the homes sheet. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to where we have correlation down here and we are going to make a correlation function in cell C60. So what we're going to do is head up to the insert function button right here. And if you don't already see it in your recently used functions, you're going to just type in C-O-R-R-E-L and enter. And it'll let you select the correlation function right there. The first array that we're going to do and that we're going to grab is from the homes sheet, which is the one that we're on right now. We're going to hit the selection arrow, that button right there. And we're going to grab cells C4 all the way down to C54. Should be this entire column down to where it's Wyoming. Then we're done making that array selection and we're going to select our second array from the homes sheet so we're going to click on the homes sheet and we're going to select from c4 all the way down to c54 so what this is doing is grabbing the same states and the same year and comparing the housing prices with the number of houses people owned at that time and seeing if there's any relationship between this information. So as you can see we have 0.201 for our correlation. Correlations fall between positive 1 on the positive side meaning uh, two things are proportionate or like they're, they are related to each other directly and negative one on the inverse side meaning when one value goes up the other goes down and it's a measure of the magnitude of that so we're going to autofill these all the way across and I'm going to just highlight these uh, values right here and I'm going to go into the uh, borders button right here and select no border. So that concludes step three. Okay, for the next step we're going to use what's called the scenario manager. So we're going to head over to the forecast sheet to do so. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to enter in cell A3 where it says scenario growth at 2000-2010 rate and B4 is going to have 10.7% which it does already. So we're going to go into the data tab now of the ribbon, head over to the what if analysis button, use the scenario manager and we're going to click add and this scenario name is going to be called growth at 2000 to 2010 rate. So you can just copy and paste that from your instructions like I did and enter it right there. And we're going to change these cells, A3, and we're going to hold control down on our keyboard and select B4. and we're going to say OK. If this pop-up doesn't come up automatically for you like it does for me, check that Excel is not blinking like an orange or a yellow color. If it is, click on it and this pop-up will show up. So we're going to leave what's in there currently and we're going to say OK. Now this is the name 
of our new scenario. This is the scenario that we have so far. We're going to go ahead and add the next one, which is under part B of four. And we're going to click the add button. We're going to call this scenario name the same thing that we're going to have in A3, which is growth at population rate, which I just copied and pasted from the instructions. And that's going to stay the same. So we're going to say OK. Now, this is what I was talking about before with Excel blinking orange. So just click on that, and it'll show this pop-up. And we're going to just paste, again, growth at population rate. And in this dollar sign $B$4 dollar sign value, we're going to have 0, 8, 3, which will be 8.3% and we're going to say OK. Now, look over here while I show you what this scenario manager actually does. So right now, we have the growth at 2000 to 2010 rate. And if I select the growth at population rate, and I click Show in this pop-up for the scenario manager, it'll change all these values by having this new percentage op, uh, right here and this will allow you to make different scenarios based on different projections that you're making. So for the third scenario that we're going to make, it's going to be a 0% uh, 2010 to 2020 homes change rate. So we're going to add a new scenario. I'm just going to call it the same thing that we're going to put in cell A3, which I copied and pasted from the directions. I'm going to say OK. Again, copy and paste the uh, element A3 from the directions, right there where it says dollar sign $A, dollar sign $3. And then for the dollar sign $B, dollar sign $4, we're going to have 0. And we're going to say OK. And now, we're going to show the results of that. And that's it for the Scenario Manager step right there. So the next thing we're going to work with is called Goal Seek. So if you were making projections for a company on uh, yearly or quarterly revenue or something like that, and you need to see how much a department or uh, sales revenue need to be to achieve that goal, you would use this. So we're going to go up into the What If Analysis up in the Data tab from the ribbon. And we're going to select Goal Seek. And we're going to set the 2020 homes number right there in the total, which is G15, to 128,162,068. So just make sure that you type that in correctly. And then we're, uh, the way we're going to get there is by changing the rate. We want to know what the growth rate has to be for homes in order to reach 128 million people in 2020. So we're going to select B4 for right there, which is our 2010 to 2020 uh, homes change rate. And we're going to say OK. And as you can see, it's 9.81%. So we're going to go up here to the Scenario Manager. And we're going to add a new scenario and we're going to call it Goal Seek Rate Goal Seek Scenario. And we're going to say OK. And that's it for the goal seek. So we want to create a scenario summary report 
So we're going to go under the data tab at the ribbon, what if analysis, scenario manager, summary, and our result cell is going to be cell G15. And we're going to say OK. And this is going to give us a nice little display of all of the summaries and what each of those rates will do to each of the totals for 2020. The last step that you need to do is you're going to answer the analysis question in row two. So 